Hello and welcome to the workshop in uh, what is going to be a highly compressed uh, cleaning vid. Uh, I previewed this lovely factory new Mass 44 a couple of weeks ago and a surprisingly num large number of comments came up saying please show us how you're going to clean this thing. So I shall uh, do my best to uh, show that. Uh, I'm sure what I'll be showing will be one of many possible options. Um, the grease on this is not cosmoline. It doesn't have that waxy texture. It seems to be just some kind of heavy grease. Uh, I must say that since I've removed the wrapping, uh, some of the volatile elements of the grease seem to have uh, vented and it's actually, especially on the wood, it's dried up a bit. It's still horrible uh, on the metal, but um, not as bad as it was when I initially unwrapped it. Um, so the aim of the game is to bring this back up to basically sort of range condition, uh, so it will operate safely. Uh, so obviously concentrating on the barrel, the gas tube, the bolt, internals of the receiver and the trigger mechanism. And also clean up the wood. However, I'm not too concerned if I'm going to leave grease in parts that really don't matter. Uh, for example, the bayonet tube here is, seems to be completely full. Uh, I don't really care. Um, it's doing a good job protecting the bayonet. Long may it stay like that. It's been like that 60, 65 years. Fine. Same with the sling swivel. Uh, I could clean it out completely, but frankly, why bother um, keeping it nice and protected? Um, so yeah, I'm not going to be disassembling, drifting out uh, pins that really, really shouldn't just because there's a bit of grease under there. Um, for example, the rear sight, uh, for the, at the moment, the slider is completely gunked up, so I may have to get that out. But if I can clean it without dismantling it, all the better. As long as the slider moves, the aperture is clear. That's all it needs. So um, what am I going to use? I'm going to keep things simple. For the gas system, I went to uh, a real smoking shop and got some proper um, fabric coated pipe cleaners, not the nasty uh, plastic ones you get for making kids models and things. Uh, that should be plenty long enough to clear it out. I don't know if it's full of, of uh, grease, but I'll make sure it isn't. Uh, for the rest, I have brought a bumper four kilo pack of random rags. Um, this is just to make sure I don't accidentally cut up any heirloom duvet covers or any tablecloths upstairs. And acetone. This will be just to, uh, for thinning the grease and then wipe it off progressively. Also, what was uh, advised was uh, to use a hairdryer just to melt a bit to soften up the grease, especially in, in some of the things where it's become particularly crusty, um, just to lighten the load on the acetone so you don't attack it too hard. Uh, it shouldn't affect the wood. It might raise the grain a bit, but uh, that's not a bad thing. Um, as I said, I'm not really you know, doing a heavy duty cleaning of the thing just to bring it out to a usable condition. And also, since this is a highly compressed episode, don't be surprised if suddenly my hair, beard changes length, clothing changes. Uh, I'm going to be doing this, you know, an hour here, an hour there whenever I have time or the enthusiasm. So uh, we'll get there eventually. Now with regard to tooling, uh, some of you may know that the uh, French firearms are graced with uh, these particular bizarre screw heads here. These are supposed to be tamper proof so that uh, Johnny Poilu does not disassemble bits of the gun that he shouldn't. Um, so these are, these have to be used, opened with uh, basically some little custom tool bits. Uh, I just find some old screwdriver hex tool bits here and just uh, grind away until two prongs are left. Some of them are a bit wider than your standard tool bit and for that, for example this one for this bolt here, uh, I just used an old circular saw blade and just cut out a little pronged key. Uh, apart from that, I have a standard gunsmithing type socket set, um, always of course with screwdriver heads that are flat rather than the, uh, the uh, sloped edges, sloped sides of, uh, sort of domestic screwdriver kits. This is so that uh, 
the bit goes right down into the bottom of the slot and doesn't mar uh, the edges, keep things nice and sharp. Right, let's go. So the first step is disassembly of uh, the receiver components and take out the bolt. There we can see that, how state it's in. Pretty nasty, but it all moves, so I'm not too worried about, as I said, cleaning that up. Yuck. So there we go, that's the uh, bolt assembly. There's the hole there for the uh, gas to blow into, and this is are truly gunk. This is going to be a complete strip down to uh, clear this all out. You hear that? Ugh. Now, one of the uh, special points about the uh, Mass 44 is that the uh, firing pin is uh, sprung, unlike the uh, 49 and 4956. So somewhere in here there is a spring, so the firing pin is a little bit lighter and thinner at the front to accommodate that. Uh, I obviously thought it was unnecessary, uh, you know, there was only French military ammo in 7.5 and uh, they were confident that uh, everything they got had primers that were hard enough, so why bother with the spring? So slam fires were not an issue. So now I'll remove the uh, buttstock and the wood at the front. There you go, that was easy. Just held on by one screw and a, uh, a good socket arrangement. There's a hook here on the front of the trigger assembly which hooks in also to the back of the receiver here and uh, gives it a good solid grip, more than you would expect actually. So now I need to remove the trigger module. All I need to do there is remove this screw here. It's currently locked in position by a little leaf spring here which is riveted to the uh, trigger guard. So I just need to push that out of the way and uh, unscrew at the same time. So here we have the trigger module, very very simple. Uh, one of the particular things about the, the uh, Mass 44 version is that the hammer has a large hole in it, simply to keep it light. And again, they don't bother with the later ones. So for the four end parts we're going to need our special screwdrivers because there's a tamper proof screw here, also on the band, and there's a nut here on the close to the receiver. <laughs> Bayonet is completely full here, the grooves are full of grease as well. So here's the end cap, it's not quite the same as the uh, second pattern Mass 36. This curved bit at the front here is uh, distinctly different. Oh, my fingers are too greasy, I can't take it off.
So here's the upper. And interesting to note that there is a, there are two metal plates here, which I suppose are heat shields, because they're going to come up against the chamber up here. Now time for the special tool. That was easy, almost as if it was made for it. So this cross bolt is uh, firmly fixed in place, so I'm going to have to lift up uh, this end and gently tap it out with a drift. There you go, there you can see the bedding set up. It's exactly like the Mass 36 actually. You've got three support points, one here just at the beginning, so after the chamber, one sort of mid midpoint, and then again right at the muzzle. So here we have the receiver, extremely simple. You can see here the uh, locking piece for the hardened uh, locking surface for the uh, to tilt the bolt. That is going to remain exactly where it is. Uh, it's staked anyway, so I'm not going to touch it. What I will remove is this little special screw here, which is retaining the uh, bolt stop. The um, yeah, the bolt bolt stop, which is a uh, gunky. So I'll just remove that so I can pull this out, clean the uh, clean its little channel and the spring in there, so that it actually works. Apart from that, there's not much to say. Uh, you can see here the gas tube and the gas port. It's uh, screwed in place. Again, the screws are staked, so I will do my best not to disassemble it, just clean it thoroughly. It's quite a long gas tube, so it's much longer than on the uh, 4956, uh, but we should be able to clean that. And the front sight here appears to be brazed on, which is new to me. And uh, so is that big hole. Uh, interesting how the hold open works. In fact, the, uh, the locking screw goes through this slot here above the spring and it provides the, the reset. So here I have a bit of a dilemma. I said I wanted to remove this bolt knob because it's going to be uh, falling to bits probably when I try and fire it because it's very old. It's already got some cracks here. Uh, however, unlike the Mass 49, it's held in place differently. Um, normally it's just a little roll pin, which you can knock out. Uh, but this actually is held in place by this, uh, this rod here that goes straight through, uh, through the uh, bolt extension here. And then there are two little washers, one on each side, and then they have hammered the ends peen the ends so that the washers can't come out and the bolt knob is then fixed. Which means I'm going to have to drill out one end uh, if I want to replace this, which I'm probably going to do because uh, when it eventually breaks I'm going to have to get rid of this anyway, so I may as well do it now. Uh, there's no point in uh, trying to keep it original, it just won't survive. So, here's a trigger group degreased enough. I've left all the grease in there because uh, well, best to keep all those axes nice and greased and the springs. And just for comparison's sake, wherever I put it, ah, that is the Mass 4956 trigger group. So you can see there's a slight change in uh, the side panels here. There's a little cutout that's been put in and you can notice there the change of design of the hammer. Uh, it has the same profile for the uh, sear catches, uh, but it's been cast as one massive block and uh, basically just machined the front surface here and the catch at the back, whereas this has been rough cast, 
and they've left here this they've left the stem as is but they've machined the rest so i'm guessing this was just for efficiency and economy of machining now what i've heard that can be done if your trigger is a little heavy is that you uh, push out the safety lever here and release one of the uh, legs of the trigger spring this one or this one um, which lightens the trigger however it also loosens the safety which means it's prone to accidentally switching on uh, of course big no-no in combat but possible on the range i suppose i honestly don't think the triggers are that bad uh, so i shall leave it as is Oh, not too bad. You can see the serial number has been uh, electro penciled onto the uh, rear of the bulk carrier. Probably after a few bottles of Pinard at lunchtime, probably. A little shaky. The one thing I found I'm using also a lot are some brass drifts. Um, not using them as drifts, and frankly, the thin ones suck unless you're drifting out something that's already loose. Uh, but they're good for you know scraping around, um, especially on steel stuff it won't mark and um, thick ones here are quite useful for just you know putting rags through holes and pushing out nice gunk all right gas system moment of truth if you're a sensitive disposition look away Going in fine. Oh, touching the sides a bit there. Keep on going. Oh, we've hit the end. Let's see if he's gone all the way in. That has gone all the way to the end and meeting up at the gas port. That's a good sign. Looks like it's all clear. It's going to make things easier and it's clean. So I think I'm gonna put this in there and leave it there while I clean out the bat. Right, now I need to work on the receiver, which is actually the worst. The, the outside's fine, it's pretty much slab-sided, but the inside's got all sorts of nooks and crannies. I'm gonna need a new rag. New rags, please! Ah, thank you. Yeah, I can work it. Lovely. Now I'm sure you all know that uh, the reason for this rather unusual external catch, although not unique, um, was that there was a hasty redesign from the Mass 40, which is basically this without a magazine. Um, and due to the lack of space here in the receiver, um, they went for this external clip. However, perhaps what is perhaps not so widely known, is that this wasn't the first design. Uh, the first option was to have internal clips. Now, I've never actually seen uh, the magazine. I've only seen it in writing. Uh, but the idea was there was notches on the inside. And presumably you would squeeze, you would squeeze some, uh, some clips 
on the side of the mag and pull it out. Uh, perhaps unsurprisingly, this didn't work and the magazines kept on falling out. So, you know, this was uh, a good compromise. Uh, you know, yes, it's a bit unusual, but uh, you can't get more positive than a massive hook clamping it to the receiver. I need to make a little tool for a particularly finicky bit, which is the hole for the bolt hole open, which is there. And there's a tiny drainage hole at the bottom, but uh, that looks quite gunked. So now I'm cleaning up the top cover and actually it's, uh, I've had it soaking in a tub in acetone all day and the grease reacted um, contrary to what I expected. I thought it would be melted away and I'd get some kind of gooey deposit at the bottom. Um, but no, what it's done, it seems to have dried it out. So it's gone all flaky and um, I can just, I've got this soft brass brush here, I can just brush it all out. It's, you know, it works, but uh, not in the way I expected. Now the site is uh, like the Mass 36 um, this site has already been adjusted. It has a, a plus four number on the site leaf. So this is non-adjustable. Uh, and the little tiny aperture that you can see there is, uh, is fixed. And basically you have to change this whole leaf part to zero the rifle. So this will have been done uh, at the factory. So uh, seems to have been a bit off. And uh, this is what I'm uh, stuck with. So, I mean, I can see it's, uh, it's slightly off to the right. So uh, hopefully that translates with, to, uh, to a good zero um, with current manufactured ammunition. So the bolt carrier and bolt are done. Now you can see how it works. We've got uh, two camming surfaces here on the inside and mating surfaces on the other side here, so that when the bolt is forward, bolt carrier is forward, this is what's happening. So the rear of the bolt is forced down and that's going to lock against this hardened insert there. And under recoil, which means gas gets blown into that hole there, it means that bolt carrier moves back, and frees up and forces up the, uh, the bolt, which is then free to ride over that locking surface. And then when it comes back into battery, forces it down again. And here's the firing pin. Now it's all cleaned. You can see it's fairly slim. It's got three flutes on it. And here's the spring that uh, finally popped out so that uh, there's no slam fires. And this is the strengthened Mass 49. You can see it's a much bigger thing. Uh, it's got a far thicker stem portion here and a longer main bit and then tapers down and it's ever so slightly fluted just at the tip tip section these two portions here and uh, yeah so if you have slam fires one solution would be to turn this down a bit and fit a spring like this or the uh, French one which is some, I'm just half a mil off the tip and uh, buffing it nicely into a nice rounded tip there and uh, yeah, it solves the problem Okay, another little bit of trivia here. See this fixing plate here? It actually has two functions. Firstly, it uh, helps hold the uh, locking surface here in place, but it also has on the inside another hardened surface, which you can see there, which is for actuating the plunger ejector, which is that, there you go, which is see it there, that bit there. So when the uh, bolt slams back, 
that hardened surface hits the plunger ejector and uh, does its thing. And uh, its design changed. I mean, this little piece here, if we compare it to the 40, 49, you see, you can see it's a, a much bigger piece. The location hasn't changed as to where the, uh, the actual surface for the uh, locking surface is, but it's been uh, reinforced in terms of uh, being screwed in place and it still has the piece on the inside. And since we've got this here, you can see that this has the slots for a scope for the designated marksman, which was included on all the 49 rifles and actually also a pre-series, um, which was the 44A, the Mass 44A, which also had uh, a rail machined into it. Here, it's just lightning cuts on each side. Okay, there's no turning back now. I have to start on the barrel. Uh, I've got a big old nylon brush here. I'm gonna go in through this end. I've got a flexible uh, coated rod here. And I'm just gonna push it through and uh, mm, see what comes out at the end. Nothing yet. Oop, there we go. Like those zit videos. Actually, not that bad. That was all. Huh. So there we go, it is all now ready for reassembly. I have removed the bolt knob. So here it is, you can see there's already cracks, and those are already there. So I managed to lever it off, and uh, at some point I will get myself a bit of plastic and turn myself a new one. In the meantime, I might steal the one from the uh, 4956. I mean, not strictly necessary, I can still operate it without it. So we'll see. Now, with concerns to the wood, uh, maybe some of you at the beginning were screaming when I said I was going to wash it with acetone and things. Rest assured, I did nothing of the kind in the end. All I did is rub it down successively with clean rags. So I give it a good rub down, leave it to air for a bit, and then come back with a fresh cloth and do it again. That's three or four times. And um, just leave it as it is. It's got a nice dark patina to it. And I thought I may as well just leave it like this. There's ever so slightly tacky still, if you really press hard on it. But I'm guessing that is probably also going to disappear over time. So, we'll just leave it as it is. Last little interesting bit about uh, the rifle is this big hole here. And cutouts on the side. And you've got a, a matching hole here at the top. And that actually lines up with the gas port. Here, so uh, obviously it leaves space for the gas port, but also we have these openings here so that uh, should anything start venting inside the stock, it's got somewhere to go. So it lines up like so. And uh, you can see on the 49 that it's, uh, it's the other side of the barrel band because they shortened the, uh, the gas tube a bit. Okay, ready for the great rebuild? Well, steady on. Cup of tea first.
So there we go, she is officially range ready. As you saw, uh, assembly was pretty easy. Uh, the only trouble I had, apart from accidentally letting go of the top cover, was um, I needed the third hand to just hold the band here together because it's very springy. Um, and then put this quintessentially French sling swivel in its place. Now I say quintessentially French because uh, basically this has been around on French military long arms since the first the first official standardized musket. Uh, the model 1717 had this kind of sling swivel as well. So uh, it's lasted all through the ages until the FAMAS basically. And before I wrap up, I just wanted to show you something about the vestigial charger guide here in the bolt carrier. Now I say vestigial because this is a leftover from the Mass 40 design which had the integral box magazine and I suspect that the follower was riding slightly higher um, because when you put in a, a charger the cartridges sit quite high above the magazine and also the magazine uh, the cartridge retention lips are getting in the way which of course there wouldn't be in an integral box mag. Uh, the consequence is when you do try and uh, charge it, what invariably happens is some of the cartridges will go sideways, and you can see here, and they're blocked. So it really is a vestigial feature and ready to be used in an emergency. Um, you know, the soldiers had pouches with four mags, so the idea really wasn't to use the charger guide to keep replenishing in the field. So there we go, I uh, hope you enjoyed the process and the little anecdotes I managed to uh, slip in there. Really can't wait to try it out. Um, at some point I'll find a suitable bit of plastic and uh, turn out a bolt knob on the lathe there. And uh, yeah, maybe do a function test just at local range at 25, just to make sure everything is functioning just as it should and um, then it'll be 300. So thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting us on uh, all, the, all across the platforms and of course, especially to our patrons. And uh, see you next time. Bye.